let's get started with the real stuff. Let's get, uh, let's take a closer look at mel commands and syntax and flags and things like that. The first question we're going to ask ourselves: What is a mel command? Now, mel is actually the outer edge uh, of Maya. Let's say when it comes to programming, Maya itself, the core, is written in C++. C++ is a programming language that if you compile it into machine language so that is something that the computer can understand. Machine language like you see here is the uh, ones and zeros that we all know then there is C++, the Maya core and then you have MEL. Well MEL commands are nothing more than calls on that C++ core of Maya. So if you execute a MEL command, be, be it sphere or particle or column layout, you're actually calling on that C++ core, okay? And you're telling Maya uh, how, what what to do with MEL, okay? Um, the structure of a MEL command is as follows: you have the MEL command, you have your flags, and then you have a value. In this example here. Uh, there is no mel command called mel command, right? This is just an example. You only have one flag. Okay, you can have a lot of flags with each mel command, and then you have different values, different kinds of values. Let's jump to Maya and let's uh, let's take a look at that. Let's take, for example, the sphere command. Just you know, we always have to start with spheres, right? Uh, the sphere command creates a NURB sphere, and let's take a look in the help what flags we can use with that okay so if you type in sphere and you hit enter I'm gonna go to sphere right here and let's take a look at the flags and let's say let's use for example the radius flag the radius flag is the radius of the object you can see that each flag has a long name in this case radius and a short name minus R now in the beginning especially or maybe even always I advise you to use the long name for most flags uh, that is making life easier for yourself and for other people when they are reading your code or debugging your code or when you're debugging your own code especially with like more exotic flags if you write uh, let's say this one for example uh, SSW I mean unless you use that all that flag all the time there's no way that you're gonna know that SSW stands for start speed um, anyway it's obviously up to you but uh, I advise you to use the long names as, as much as possible uh, okay now what this all means these Q and E and thing I will explain that in a second uh, so let's take a look at the radius flag there you go and let's say minus radius it's not actually minus it's just a dash in front of the um, uh, flag and let's say 180 always terminate your line or terminate your command with a semicolon so Maya knows that uh, that that line is finished then hit enter I obviously have a huge sphere so I'm just gonna change that a little bit I delete the sphere and I have to put that let's say 10 okay so let's say 10 there you go there you have my sphere um, um, this is obviously represented in your channel box because what I did just here is nothing more than things that are already in the interface. So if I want to do this through the interface, I can just go create nerves primitives sphere, and then uh, I can change this here to ten. Okay, you see that like I mentioned before, everything is reflected in the script editor. If I just copy that, you see that by default. Uh, by default the sphere command, the sphere command that is created by default has a lot of flags that are uh, set at its default values. Again this is very very uh, handy to look at so you know what the default values are and, and how you can change them and things like that. Okay, So let me just delete that and let me delete that sphere that I created there. Uh, actually let me delete them both and let's add some more flags to this. There's a name flag Okay, I'm going to call this one, let's say, half sphere, because I'm going to create half a sphere. You see that it's always good practice. It's, in this case, it's not really necessary, but it's good practice to put your strings. Oops, there has to be half sphere like that. Um, in between quotation marks. Uh, strings are letters. I'll explain in the next chapter what strings are and integers and things like that. But it's always good 
practice to put them in between quotation marks. Most of the time it's absolutely necessary uh, if you don't want to get uh, syntax errors. So just put name always in quotation marks. And let's add some more flags. Uh, there's one flag like, you know, end, or let's start with start sweep. Start sweep like that. Let's start the make it a start sweep of zero. And let's see what the correct name or the correct name of the flag is for end sweep. There you go. I can just copy that from here so I don't have to type it. And let's call that or let's give that a value of 180. It's like that. Okay. Now, if I execute this, again, remember that when you execute your commands, hit enter on the numerical keyboard, key, uh, keypad and not enter in the middle of your uh, keyboard. So there you go. You see now that I have half a sphere, which is called half a sphere, with a uh, start sweep of zero, made a bit smaller, with a start sweep of zero, with an end sweep of 180, and with a radius of 10, and which is called half sphere. You see the name in the outliner as well, half sphere. Okay, so that's a very very simple example of uh, a mel command. So it goes mel command flag and then a value like that okay sphere is the mail command name is the flag and a value in this case is half sphere or 10 and so on okay okay um, the next thing that I want to show you is if we go into the help again you have these uh, colored uh, properties here Q E and then there is C Q, E, and C stands for, respect, respectively, stands for query, edit, and create. You see that uh, th some flags uh, don't have all of them, and some flags only have one of them. By default, each flag is in create mode. So you don't have to type create, actually, uh, because by default, each flag is in create mode. Uh, if you want to change the mode of a flag, to query or to edit, that is the first flag that you have to write. Okay, let's take a look at the query uh, command. Uh, sorry, the query mode. The query mode means uh, or allows you to query the properties of the object that you just uh, that you have specified in the command. So let's say that we want to know the radius of this sphere. Okay, so we type sphere minus Q to put it into query mode minus radius just like that and we execute that you can see here terminate that you can see that my result here is 10 okay 10 is the result of that because obviously I knew that because I created that right here but that is very very important to be able to query commands so you can put them into variables and so you can work with it okay the next uh, mode is edit so I can type E or edit, and then let's say I want to change that radius that I just know, and I put it. I want to change it into five. Okay. So if I am going to execute this now, take a look at what's going to happen to my sphere here. Just highlight that. Like so, blah, blah. there you go. My sphere now has a radius of five. So this allows me to uh, edit and query commands. So I can change them, and so I can ask what kind of values are within certain flags. The, this You will use this all the time. We will use this through the course. So if it's not really clear right now, don't worry about it too much, uh, because it will be cl become clear after the, you know, whatever, the hundred times we do it. Okay, so don't worry about that too much. But it should be clear already now. Um, one thing to note is that you cannot mix the different modes uh, within a single command. So you cannot type, uh, you cannot query and edit at the same time. You have to do that uh, in different commands. Okay. Um, let's take a look at another one. Um, another command that you will use all the time, especially with animation. It is called current time. Okay. Current time tells you what the current time is. So if I were to drag my time slider here and I put this into query mode terminate that command you'll see that the result is 38 because I'm now I'm, I'm at 38 and then I can just execute that and go to frame 71 or sorry it will query whatever is uh, wherever my uh, tick is in the timeline okay um, 
you could edit that as well. So if I were to edit that and set to 125, or let's take one that I have on my timeline, like so, you'll see that this one, uh, that, that my timeline is now set to frame 20. That is one that you use all the time uh, when you're writing scripts concerning animation uh, or that have to do with animation or particles and things like that. Because let's say that you uh, are creating an, an effect uh, and you want to make sure that the user starts at frame zero so your particle uh, your particle caches uh, are, are calculated correctly. Well, in, in somewhere in your script you just say current time edit and then maybe go to frame zero. So that means that if that script gets executed, you're sure that the user starts at frame zero. Okay. Um, all right. So that's very, very short about uh, mail commands and uh, flags. Let's, uh, let's do something fun right now. Well, fun. Uh, let's see how we can create a tiny little interface that is not useful right now for anything, but just to show you what is, what, what's happening. Uh, and let's put a button in that interface uh, with uh, that, that will create a sphere. Okay, so it will just allow me to explain you a little bit more about commands and stuff like that. Don't worry about too much because they're from chapter uh, seven onwards. We're gonna almost create for everything. We're gonna create a, a, an interface, a UI. So I'm gonna go a bit fast over the commands now, but it will it will become clear. If you want to create a window, so I'm just gonna command here and I'm gonna uh, comment here and I'm gonna write in English first what I'm gonna do that's always good practice uh, in chapter 10 or sorry in chapter 9 I will show you how you can easily uh, deconstruct uh, your thoughts and uh, pour them into mail scripts and this is one vital part of that you just type out in it's pseudocode you type out in, in normal English what you're gonna do so I'm just gonna say create a window with a button and that creates a sphere okay you see that my let me move that over a bit you see that my um, my commands are green here sorry my comments are green here uh, and they are not they don't do anything okay so because I wrote the comments here with a double slash in front of it my will not consider that as a command there is one other way in which you can uh, comment out uh, longer uh, comments. So if I were to write some more stuff here, stuff, stuff, foo, okay, and I want to comment all that out, you do a forward slash and an asterisk, and you, uh, you terminate that with an asterisk and a forward slash. Okay, that means that all this stuff here now, Maya knows that this has nothing to do with the code as such, it is just comments. Okay, so I don't need that right now. So that are the two ways to write comments. Okay, if you want to create a window in Maya, a small little floating window, the command for that is window. Haha. <laughs> Let's give it a name, which is the same flag as the sphere in the sphere. Um, let's say, let's call it sphere, sphere window. Okay. Now, one thing that you have to do with uh, controls, it's called, so all the, the things that you put in UIs, whether buttons, sliders, windows, uh, titles, uh, columns, and things like that, you have to give them an internal name. I'm going to come back on this in depth uh, in a couple of chapters. Um, but you have to give it a name so Maya can recognize this and you yourself can recognize that window. It is different from this name, which is purely for um, display. You have to give it an internal name as well. So I'm just going to call this sphere window. Uh, I'm going to call it my window. Okay. Again, I will come back on this uh, later. You don't have to worry about this too much. Each thing within the... Um, a window has to have a layout. So I'm going to create a column layout and again I'm going to give that an internal name. If you do not create a layout, whether it's a column layout or a fra frame layout or a form layout, you're going to get an error message. Again, let me stress this, don't worry if you don't understand this. This is just to show you a little bit more practical example of that sphere command that we just have and commands in, in general. Okay, then I'm going to create a button and on that button I'm going to put a label. 
Okay, label is nothing more than the word that is displayed uh, on the button. And I'm going to say create sphere, like so. And then I'm going to give the, that button a command, which means that if you press the button, it should do something. That is the command flag. And in there, I'm going to put the sphere command, just like that. And I'm going to call this button the sphere button, just like that. And then the last thing that I have to do is I have to tell Maya to show that window. Okay, that is basically the structure of creating a window. First, you <coughs> excuse me. First, you um, tell Maya that you want to create a window, and after you create the contents of that window, you show the window, and that window will be uh, Maya has to show uh, my window. Okay, let's hope that we don't have any syntax errors. And we do have a syntax error. Um, invalid flag name. So the only place where I use this is here. So let's take a look. Ah, yeah, I know already what's wrong. So ooh, I did this actually on purpose because I'd like to show my students when I'm teaching uh, the mistakes that everybody will make. Okay. Um, I will do this uh, often, not too often, but I will do this uh, quite a bit that I make the mistakes and then I'll show you how to fix them. Okay? So name is apparently a wrong flag. So let's switch to where you will always switch, Oops. And which is the help, and let's go to window. Okay. So the window command now, let's take a look at that. Window, window, window. If I want to give this a name, it has to be a different flag. Now the flag that it is, is title. Title. The Windows title. That's the one that I need. I don't need name because name doesn't even exist. Okay? So there you go. Let me execute that again. There you go. You have this one now. So just to show you what happens, that this works, and if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, no worries, then we'll fix it. Now I have this little floating window, and if I hit the button, there you go, I have a sphere. Let me bring up my outliner. If I hit the button again, I have a sphere, 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 and so on, and so on. Uh, obviously, this is not something that you would use. Uh, well, actually, you could, um, but this is mainly to show you a little bit uh, more commands and flags and things like that. This, uh, the internal names, I will come back to this in depth in uh, one of the following chapters. Okay, so. That brings us to, I guess, the fourth point in this uh, chapter. So I explained the create edit mode. Um, okay, the MEL syntax. Now, as mentioned before, MEL is actually it is a language, and every language has a syntax. A syntax means, uh, in English, for example, that a girl pretty the street crossed sounds a bit dodgy. Okay, you will not understand it, especially if it's a foreign speaker. You will not understand what you know what is going on. Now, a pretty girl crossed the street. Now that makes a lot more sense. Okay, that is uh, syntax. You have to put the words and um, the punctuation and stuff like that in a certain order uh, f to make the language understandable. Um, exactly the same thing uh, goes for uh, Mel. E if I switch to Maya, let me remove that a bit, and let's say that I create, uh, that I try to create a uh, an error or a syntax error. Let's say sphere, and let's say I I write the command first, uh, sorry, the value first, and then the flag, okay, and then execute that. Okay, I'm gonna get an error, invalid object or value ten, because the correct syntax is command. Uh, flag name and then the value so I have to put it in the correct order otherwise Maya will not understand it okay it's certain things that you have to keep in mind otherwise it will not work okay it's it's very well explained in the help uh, you will get occasionally your syntax error and that is for me actually that's the fun of coding it's it's kind of like it's always riddles um, you will get syntax errors, you have to solve problems, and you just have to solve it. You, and it's just you and the code. That's another thing that I really like. There's no creative directors or art directors. Um, it's just you and the code. And it's it's kind of like a ball game. You know, you, you have to solve syntax errors, you have to solve the problems, and it's fun. It's very addictive as well. 
Um, anyway, back to the back to the topic at hand. Um, I am going to show some more things concerning syntax and basically good practice um, in 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 creating Mel code. Um, just as you would create paragraphs and use points and semicolons when you wrote, write normal English, you have to do the same thing uh, in Mel. Just to make everything a bit more uh, easy for the eye, easy understandable, easy to debug, just to make life easy. Um, as mentioned before, you can uh, write as many commands and flags and things after each other, um, but uh, it is much easier if you use things like white spaces. Now, Maya has no problem with 20 commands after each other. As long as you use a semicolon, it is not a problem. Maya will just separate it uh, for you, so to speak, wherever there's a semi semicolon. But you have to put in your own structure. Let me open up a script, um, the Snowmaker script from Steven De La Luca. Uh, you can see things like like here, for example. Uh, it is just nicely paraphrased. Uh, the, the things that should be under each other are under each other. You have obviously the color syntax, but that is Mel Studio Pro. Um, let's let's go over some of these things that you should do. Okay, semicolons. Okay, so the first thing is semicolons. All Mel commands must end with a semicolon. This is not only uh, paraphrasing, but this is syntax. If you don't uh, terminate your commands with a semicolon, you will get syntax errors and your code will not work. B, flag names. Uh, especially in the beginning, try to avoid the short form of command flags. Mm. For example, if you have the select command, all dependency nodes, as, oppo as opposed to select A and D, or if you have the revolve command, use local pivot as opposed to revolve ULP. Mm, this means that um, let me just uh, bring up my workspace so I can shift in between scripts. There you go. Um, so if you have uh, whatever that command was, the revolve command, revolve command, uh, let's look that up. Revolve, there you go. The revolve command, and let's look for a really long flag. Okay. Uh, well, which is the one in the examples? Curve on surface, for example, COS. Okay, replace original, this one. There's a big difference. If you check your code after that and you see this, or you see this. Okay, maybe when you just read it in the help, you will know that replace original, uh, the short flag, the short name for that is RPO. But I can assure you, if you look at it even the next day or something like that, and something is wrong with this part of the code, you will have to look RPO up because you have no idea, you, you can't remember that. That uh, is, uh, you should see, I already forget now, replace originals. Um, especially if you have, you know, each mail script is hundreds of commands, so there's no way that you remember those hundreds or hundreds and uh, more uh, of, of flags. So that's just good practice again. Um, let's switch back to that one. Okay, white spaces. Use a lot of white space to break up uh, commands and programming structures. Okay, this is again uh, good practice. Uh, as I said before, you don't really have to do that, but it is just good practice so you can clearly see uh, what is going on. Uh, let's take a look at this and let me just make my font a little bit smaller so you can see it a bit better. Um, stuff like that, okay? You see that in this script there is a lot of white spaces, there is a lot of commands, uh, sorry, comments, so you can see what this procedure does. It's kind of like titles in a book or, or in a chapter. You just, this, okay, this does that. White space, you have all your uh, your variables, okay? Also, when you use conditionals, you use tabs. Tabs are these things, okay? So you you move your text along so it becomes easier to see. Um, let me show you a good example right here. Over here because there were a lot of over here because there were a lot of flags, instead of putting them after each other, you put them under each other. Okay? From from the from the, the time that there are more 
then let's say five or six or seven flags, put them under each other and use a tab. Makes it much easier to see what is going on. Um, you know, just like that. Um, so you can just again making life easy for yourself, especially if you don't have Mail Studio Pro uh, and you don't have this feature. Making using the comments uh, and using these dashed lines or whatever you want to use makes it easier to navigate within your script. Okay, and you can also see a lot of comments, a lot of comments. Almost each line or uh, each line is commented, meaning that. I say to myself and to whoever is 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 reading that script, uh, whatever whatever is happening there. Like for example, a, a string remove array re requires two arrays, so we make removed an array of one. Uh, this is something that 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 I didn't know, so I just looked it up in the help, uh, and then I wrote it in the code. So next time when I read it, I will remember uh, better. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, page comments okay I just I just uh, explained that actually uh, the comments in your script are invaluable to explain what is happening I personally am a little bit um, allergic to scripts without comments uh, it is good practice or it is actually invaluable that you comment out uh, that you comment a lot of stuff in your script uh, what I also do is I use comments to add to do's in my script feature enhancements or bug fixes so uh, I remember what I, I remember what I have to do, and normally write those at the top. And as mentioned before, as well, there's two ways to add comments. For single line comments, you use two forward slashes. For com comments that consist for more uh, more than one line, use a forward slash and an asterisk combination, just like that. And this is a thing that I al already also discussed. It is multiple line commands, uh, meaning that if like I said, if you have more than one flag, or if you're more than five flags, uh, it is good practice to put um, them all under each other. Okay, so now that we know all that, let's use, let me close that, or actually let me change my font size again to 13. Oops, did I change that? Yes, okay. And let me move my workspace. Okay, there you go. Now let's, now that we know all that, a lot of talking, let's change that into something uh, that we can <coughs> actually use. Um, we're going to create a window that is a bit of an elaboration of the one that we just created. So again, I'm going to create an outline first of what we are going to do. Uh, I am going to create a window with... Um, I'm going to create a window with a sphere button, like we did before. Okay, and then the second thing is I'm going to create a radius. Let's get. I'm going to create a slider that controls the radius of the sphere. Okay, sorry, I'm a little bit dyslectic. And the last one is I'm going to put a button in there that when the button gets pressed, uh, it will print uh, something like, you know, Wooza, or, shit, I'm having serious problems here. Woo, Wooza, there you go. Obviously, I have to comment this out, like so, like so, and then I can remove this one. So this is a bit of an outline of what we're going to do. Okay. So the first thing is I am going to create a window with a title. Okay. Um, let's say that I call this window, obviously. Then the title flag, like so. And I'm going to call this uh, sphere, just like we did before, maybe. Sphere window. Just like that. Okay. And then, like I said before, I'm going to call this, give this an internal name, like so. There you go. So again, command, uh, flag, value, and then the internal name. We'll discuss this later, as mentioned before. So everything in a window in a UI needs a layout. Again, I'm going to use the column layout. I just use the uh, auto, uh, 
autocomplete there uh, of Mel Studio Pro. And then I'm going to give this a couple of flags as well. I'm going to use the long names, okay? And we're going to look it up. Um, let's go to the help and look up column layout. Column layout. There you go, column layout. The one that I want to use is adjustable column. Adjustable column means that all the children, all the controls, all the buttons in this case, in that column will stretch and uh, will change when you change the window when you change the column layout okay uh, they will stretch and shrink with the layout you see here that this adjustable column the value of this is a boolean a boolean uh, in the next chapter when we talk about uh, variables we will discuss data types but a boolean basically means on or off one or zero okay that is a boolean so it means that you have to use a value there that turns that on so if we go back and I say adjustable column, I don't want to type that, so I just copy it, adjustable column. I have to say on or one, that's the same, okay? And then I'm gonna give it a name, an internal name, main call, main column, okay? Then I'm gonna create three buttons. Button, and the first one has a label, let's call that one sphere, like that. And I'm gonna call that one sphere button, like so. And I'm just gonna copy that like so oops I forgot to put my quotation marks okay the second button uh, I am gonna call oh no it's not a button or the last one is a button so I'm gonna put that one like so and that one will be Uza right and we'll call this the or let's say the Prince button okay and then in the middle, as pointed here in my outline, I'm going to create a slider that controls the radius of the sphere. Now, to create a, a slider, the command that you need is attri attribute uh, field slider group. Okay, it's a bit of a long command, but it's this one: attribute field slider group. Attribute field slider group means that you will get a uh, label, a float value, and a slider. Okay, I'll show you in a second when I execute this what that does actually a good idea always is let's take a look in the help and let's execute the uh, example in the help of this like so so, so we see what it does I'm just gonna scroll all the way down I'm gonna copy this completely and below this I'm gonna execute this like so so what we are using or what we want to use is this one okay this is a an attribute field slider group it's a group because it has a text value which you can right click and you can set your uh, keyframes and new expressions and things like that just you just like sliders in the uh, attribute editor you have your slider and then you have your value okay that's why it's called attribute slider group okay now the attribute slider group will need some flags um, I am just gonna the attribute flag is the flag uh, of which the value will specify what will change with that slider okay so what I'm gonna do to show you that is I am gonna create a sphere and I'm just gonna um, attach that one to the slider because we're not gonna let's say that we're not gonna create a nerve sphere but that we create a polysphere this time so if we take a look at polysphere there you go this is the command that we're gonna use um, and this is the name of the uh, of the sphere that is gonna appear actually I'm gonna leave that out for a second I'm gonna comment it out and then we're gonna base it on the sphere that we are gonna uh, that we're gonna create okay um, and then the last thing that we have to do is we have to show the window show window my window there you go um, okay so let's execute that like so there you go so I have my button you see that the flag in the column layout worked fine because when I stretch this it's all working okie dokie Okay, um, 
one more thing that I'm gonna have to do obviously is now I have to put my commands in this button because if I press these buttons uh, nothing is happening okay so the first one here is the sphere button I'm gonna say flag command and then the command that we need is p sphere which which, which creates a uh, polygonal sphere I have to learn how to type a little bit uh, so sphere like so okay so that command now if I press this button now that will uh, create a sphere for me and then the the command for this one here is already a little bit of a special one okay so I'm gonna put this command at this command flag right here and then if I want to print something let me show that here first I have to do it like that like so all right you can see now that this gets printed right here okay let's put some more hose in there uh, so if I execute that there you go I have to go in there so that is actually what I have to put into that command flag okay uh, the problem is oh, it's not really a problem the problem is that I have to use um, quotation marks around my command flag now this is going to confuse my a bit so what you have to do is you have to escape the quotation marks that you use within your print command escape means that you have to put a slash in front of them okay that means that whatever follows exactly after this slash will be considered as a special command in this case a special command will be a normal uh, a normal quotation mark um, this will be covered much more in the next chapter again these special uh, special characters and things like that but just to make this work this is how you have to do it okay so we put the print command within the command flag let's take a look let's close this window and let's take a look if this is working let's just delete that sphere so we can see it's working so it cannot find that sphere command okay that's something that we have to fix how about this one okay this one is working so apparently I made a typo here so let's just fix that okay you can see that the button uh, the wuza button is working because it is printing the wuza right here so let's take a look again what the command is if we create a sphere um, let me clear my history so I can more clearly see it so I'm just gonna create polygonal sphere sphere and this is it it's called poly sphere not p sphere p sphere is the name okay so I'm gonna delete that there you go and let's execute that once more and let's delete the sphere so it doesn't clutter our site there you go we have the sphere and this button is still working final thing that we have to adjust here is the attribute field slider group okay now how do we attach an attribute to that okay well it is actually very easy uh, but just as a point of reference let's take a look at that okay so the attribute uh, attribute attribute there you go attribute the name of a unique unique attribute of type double or int this newly created field will be attached to the attribute so that modifications to one will change the other mm. that's a bit dry and boring so the next step is that we're gonna take a look at the examples so there you go what you have to do is you have to type the object name and then the attribute there's already a variable here again don't panic we'll discuss this in the next chapter um, but the syntax is that you need object name plus the attribute name Syn uh, the object name plus the attribute name so the object name in this case is polysphere and the attribute that we're going to attach to that is radius close quotation marks and give my slider a internal name say radius slider like so and let's close this window let's execute that uh, polysphere one radius is not found how very odd uh, let's see how we can fix that so that's the one ah, radius 
are very strange. What I always do if things like that happen is I just change the radius manually and then I can just copy it from here. Okay? Okay, it's because I have to use the shape node and not the transform node. Okay? So you just change it again, you look what happens in the script editor, and there you go. And now if you execute that oh my window is still open somewhere 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 okay let me do a little trick here don't worry delete UI because it tells me object name is not unique my window which means that the window is still open somewhere later I will show you a trick on how to fix that so I'm just gonna delete that window with the delete UI command and then I'm gonna execute all this again so there you go I'm gonna create this a bit bigger now I'm going to close this down and you'll see that now I can change my radius with this if I open up this one uh, if I click this button you can still see my Wuza and if I want to create other spheres there you go later obviously I will uh, explain you how you can connect uh, attribute field slider groups to all the stuff in your scene or how you can change it so it, it only is attached to the sphere that you want and so on and so on like I said before everything 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 is possible with now okay okay let's uh, let's skip to the next part right now before we uh, skip to uh, chapter 5 uh, I want to take some more time to give you a little bit more examples of often used mel commands um, the often used mel commands are set attribute get attribute connect attribute x form and ls which stands for list these are mel commands that you will use in basically every script that you write so I just want to uh, as a form of uh, introduction introduce you to, to these mel commands I have prepared some little uh, examples the first one is uh, set attribute which sets the attribute of an object an object that is specified uh, as follows the syntax is as follows you have the node name then you have the attribute and then you have the value okay you can have flags with the set attribute we'll look at that in a second so just imagine you create a spotlight just like that okay I'll, I'll put the command here uh, it's not really a command it's a procedure but anyway uh, here so you can see clearly what happens you can also see it here what happens let's say that we want to change the intensity the of the spotlight the script the, sorry the command for that is set attribute then within quotation marks the node name the attribute name and the value so if I execute that there you go my intensity is 4 now now if I want to change the color let me open up the attribute let's say I want to change the color of that is the same syntax almost except for the fact that color goes with a vector vector means three values don't worry in the next chapter I'll explain vectors and, and all the data types uh, which means R G B so if I execute that you can see that it's blue now uh, you can see zero zero one zero zero one okay so that's how you change that now you can use there's there's a couple of flags with key uh, sorry with set attribute one of the flags is keyable so you can use that to uh, make attributes unkeyable let's say that we want to make translate Z unkeyable again of this spotlight so I just execute that and you see that, see that it disappears now from the channel box because it's no longer keyable you can also obviously group these commands let's say that I want to lock a scale X Y and Z and enter you see that they become grayed out because they are locked now because I used the lock flag uh, on my set attribute if I take a look at that in the help set attribute you see that there are quite a bit of flags uh, related um, with this this command it's not really the flags it's the uh, the explanation of the uh, values that go with it because it's a, a command that happens that has that that harbors a lot of power you can you can um, you have to be very specific with it but the flags that we use are keyable lock and then there are some more flags which we didn't use which are obviously right there for you to read and to use in the help let's use set attribute no that's the one that we just did let's use get attribute okay let's create a new scene and let's create a spotlight again instead of creating it with the interface I'll just execute it from here like so 
and then let's say that I want I do exactly the same thing as before I set the intensity and then I set the color and then I use these two so I'll just continue from the chapter before I have uh, made the translate Z attribute on keyboard and I have locked all the scale values in X Y and Z well you can just use the get attribute to get those values it's kind of like the query flag uh, of a command but then for a node if I execute this you can see that it says here result 4 that means that my intensity is 4 well I can check that obviously it's right here it's 4 okay um, well to cast that value in a variable you have to put it in between these ticks but we, I will discuss that in the next chapter I just wanted to introduce to that already um, but you don't know yet what a variable is so don't worry about that too much next command that you use all the time is connect attribute well connect attribute is nothing more um, than what you do when when you use the uh, connection editor um, relationships no it's here connection editor okay if you use this connection editor then you're connecting attributes and that is exactly what you do let's say that you create a locator uh, use the space locator command and then you create a sphere and then you connect let's say the translate of the sphere to the scale of the uh, locator okay so uh, it says now move sphere around to get wacky stuff well let's start moving the sphere around and you can see clearly that these uh, two attributes are connected and if I were to go to the hypergraph whoops uh, I have a little bit of uh, display problems here but you can see that there is a connection in between the translate and the scale of those two nodes okay okay let's take a look at the xform command well, I actually have to stay in Maya and I'm gonna open um, well the list command first um, the list command lists a lot of stuff uh, basically it can list everything and if it's not there uh, you will you can uh, create your own flags so to speak to list it whatever you want this is something that you will use all the time especially um, to get for example the select something that is selected let's say you create a sphere you duplicate it a couple of times and you create a locator and you select everything you can use the ls minus sl which stands for selection to list all the objects that are selected you can see now that if I drag that in here that this is everything that I have selected the sphere 1, sphere 2, sphere 3, sphere 4, sphere 4 and the locator okay this you will use all the time uh, when you're creating scripts you can also list all the cameras in your scene for, for the moment that is front shape, perspective shape, side shape and top shape if I were to create a new camera um, create camera like so and I execute that command again you will see that I now have camera shape 1 in there as well so this is like an, an inventory uh, an inventory command that allows you to uh, list all the stuff in your scene there's a lot of flags and you can list all your lights which is right now none but if I were to create a directional light and I were to create a spotlight and I execute that command again you will see that my directional light and my spotlight shape is right there you can list all your materials meaning uh, right now I don't have too many but let's say that I create some materials so let's say that I create a font, a shading map, a layered shader, uh, whatever and then I list all these materials you'll see that they get all listed in the next chapter I will show you how to cast these things how to put these things in variables and then you can reuse them for example the first one let's say that you want to uh, perform an action on all the selected uh, objects like maybe rename them or something well then you have to use that command okay the last one is the Swiss Army tool of uh, translation commands um, which is xform xform is a command that allows you to do things that are normally not possible within the interface uh, it's a very powerful command with dozens of flags that allow you to query or change transformations that are more complicated than the normal move rotate and scale um, it can also be used to query some values that cannot be set or queried directly 
uh, within the interface such as transformation matrices or the bounding boxes. Okay. Um, so that's what that command does. Let's create a sphere. Again, I use the polysphere command. Uh, I know that I can use the uh, interface here, but this is a DVD about scripting, so I try to get you accustomed with the commands as much as, as, much as possible. So select a vertex um, in this sphere. Uh, I'm going to use the select command, or you can obviously just uh, use it like, like, or select like this. You can see that this selects vertex 239. Uh, let's select vertex 228. You can see that this one is here. Uh, take a look at this command already. Select. <coughs> the select command is the command that allows you to select things. It has a flag, replace. I wrote here what it does. Replace indicates that the specified item should replace the existing items on the active list, which means that if I select something else, and then I execute this command again with the replace flag, this object here will be replaced with my new selection, which in this case is vertex 228. There you go, okay? So what I want to do now is I want to know the position in world space of this vertex. I have to use the xform command there. So I'm gonna say xform, put it in query mode, put it in world space mode, and then query the translation values of vertex 228. So if I execute that, I get this one. I get three values which specify the x, y, and z position. Let me drag that here. The x, y, x, y, and z position of vertex 228 in world space. That is why you use x form. Uh, another example is if I go back to object mode, if I want to know the bounding box of this sphere, I can just use x form and I can query put it in query mode and query the bounding box of polysphere one and there you go I have uh, X min Y min Z min and uh, the, the, the positive values of this now this might seem a little bit confusing because you get six numbers here all of a sudden well what does that mean again go to your help okay uh, I'm just gonna go to the help and go X form there you go and then I'm gonna go control F to look for the flag that I used, which is bounding box. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Uh, you see that I do a lot of copying and pasting because it's, you know, it's, it's much faster than typing. And you have to learn how to use, in most programs, if not all, to find something as Control F, uh, which is the same as, you know, like here going, I don't even know where it is in, in, in Netscape. Uh, but it is Control F in Word, it's Control F in uh, Mel Studio Pro, it's Control F in Netscape. So that's what you have to know. And then I just typed or copied bounding box. If I go there, you can see returns a bounding box of an object. The values returned are the f in the following order. The minimum value in X, in Y, in Z, and then the maximum values in X, Y, and Z. We will use this later uh, more in depth, the uh, X form and the bounding box. Uh, okay? All right.